Okay, I'm going to split these passive income ideas into two categories. First, we've got the truly passive form of making an income. This is relatively low effort, but as you'll see, it requires you to invest a substantial amount of money to generate significant income each month. And the second category doesn't require you to start with a lot of capital, but it involves putting in a lot of work to see results. This is also called leveraged income, and it refers to the idea that the work you put in once will generate recurring profits. So let's first look at the ideas under the truly passive way of making an income each month, starting with peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending involves lending money to those who wish to borrow it without going through a bank. This more direct approach allows lenders to earn a higher rate of interest and borrowers to pay a lower one than if they were to go through a bank. Financially, it works out as generally better for both lenders and borrowers, although at a higher risk for lenders because the person borrowing your money may make late repayments or default on their loan. Also, although unlikely, it is possible for the platform you're using to go out of business. This being said, for those willing to accept the risk, peer-to-peer -peer lending can generate a good return and doesn't require much effort. So this is how it works. As a lender, you'll register with a chosen platform and pay in money using a debit card or direct transfer. You'll then set or agree to a fixed interest rate and choose the period of time you'd like to lend the money for. At the end of this term, once your loan has been repaid with interest, you can withdraw your cash or invest your profits again to grow your money further and continue making passive income. So to this method, you make money based on the interest rate you set or agree to. Typical interest rates can vary from 1% to 6%, depending on the risk you're willing to take. In terms of platforms that you can use, the major players in the UK include Zopa, Funding Circle, and Ratesetter. In the US, you've got Prosper.com and Lending Club. Now, as you can imagine, if you want to make significant income each month this way, you will need to lend substantial sums of money. For example, if you're able to lock in a 5% interest rate, assuming you lend £20,000 or dollars for 12 months, you can get about 83 pounds or dollars per month. The next idea under this category is dividend investing. A dividend is simply a portion of a company's profits that is divided up among some or all of its shareholders. So when you buy a share of a company, you now own a little piece of that company. And so if it's paying dividends, they're taking a part of their profits and giving you a percentage. And you may also be benefiting from the stock going up in value. And there are two ways of getting dividends. First is by investing in individual stocks that pay a dividend, such as Coca-Cola, Unilever, Starbucks, and so on. A good dividend stock will pay an average of 3 to 5% in dividends per year. Therefore, as long as you pick the right stocks, they are one of the easiest ways to make passive income on a regular basis with absolutely no work. And here is a pro tip. Look for companies that fall under the following categories. Dividend kings, which are companies that have consistently paid their dividends, as well as increasing them too for the past 50 years. And dividend aristocrats, which are stocks that have consistently paid and increased their dividends for the past 25 years. You could also find good dividend stocks outside this list, but that requires more knowledge and research. And broadly speaking, buying individual stocks requires a lot of research and is quite risky. Which is why the second way is to invest in dividend index funds and ETFs. These are baskets of dividend paying companies which you can invest in all at once. It's a safer way to earn dividends because you're diversifying. So instead of investing only in a handful of companies and relying on their dividend payments, you now have pieces of hundreds and even thousands of companies that will pay you dividends. Also, it saves you the trouble of having to spend time researching and trying to pick those individual stocks that have good financial positions. A very popular ETF that you can look into is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, ticker symbol VHYL. This invests in over 1,700 high dividend payers from all over the world, and it currently pays a dividend of 3.7% per year. As an example, to be able to earn 500 pounds or dollars per month from this fund, you need to have approximately 175,000 invested. So it requires you to invest quite a lot of money to make a significant income. With both these approaches, all you have to do is to choose a broker like Trading212 here in the UK or Robinhood in the US, open a tax efficient investment account such as the Stocks and Shares ISA in the UK or a Roth IRA in the US and pick the dividend stocks or index funds that you wish to invest in. Before we move on to the next one, do me a huge favor and drop a like. It really does help out the channel. The next one is real estate and I know what you're thinking. You need a lot of money to buy property. That's true but if you really want to invest in real estate and don't have enough money to buy actual properties, REITs are a great alternative. REITs or real estate investment trusts are companies that own and manage income producing real estate, houses, apartment buildings, office buildings, warehouses, etc. They were like an index fund whereby investors money is used to buy different properties and the income generated from those properties is then paid out to investors as dividends. REITs are like any other company that you can buy shares of, but they differ in that they have to follow 
those strict set of rules. One of those rules which makes them an attractive investment for passive income is that they require to pay 90% of their profits to shareholders. As a result, they tend to offer higher dividend yields than stocks and can be a stable source of income because no matter what, the rents have to be paid. Also because these REITs generally have long leases with blue chip tenants, the rental income you could make is relatively more reliable in different market conditions. So you know that you will always get your income from them. Some examples of UK REITs include British Land, Land Securities and Segro. And you've got plenty of them in the US as well. And as with dividend stocks, there are also REIT ETFs which hold all these companies plus many others from different countries and sectors. Some examples here include the iShares UK Property ETF, which is great to access property in the UK. Then the iShares European Property Yield ETF for properties in Europe. And something like the iShares Developed Markets Property Yield ETF will give you exposure to properties from all over the world. And in terms of how much dividend they pay, on average you'll get between 3-5%. to Therefore, as is the case with dividend stocks, you do need to invest a fair amount of money to get significant income. The last way to make passive income under this category is to rent out things, such as your garage, parking spot, driveway, etc. This one works out well if you live in an area where there is a lot of traffic, like near a train station. Other ideas that come to mind are renting storage spaces, your property through Airbnb, and even renting your car. So make a list of things you can rent out and find an app that allows you to do this. And you can easily make 500 pounds or dollars each month. Let's now look at the second category, which involves you using your time rather than a lot of money to make passive income. And the first idea in this category is to sell digital products and online courses. The whole premise with this one is to find something that you're really good at or that you have a lot of knowledge about, turn it into a digital product and then sell it. This includes ebooks, website themes, stock photos, presets, dropshipping courses, Excel courses, templates, etc. The list is endless. And the beauty with this one is that you only need to create the product once and then perhaps update it now and then. For example, if you're really good at your job and you think you can provide value to other people, put that into a course and start selling on different platforms. The best example is this developer who did just that and ended up making $2.3 million. What I like about this method is that it costs very little to get started, but it can generate a lot of passive income along the way. It just takes some time and effort to create the product, find people to buy it and then scale it up. And this leads us nicely into the next method, which is to create content, or in other words, to become a creatorpreneur. So as with the previous idea, this involves creating a content strategy about something that you're passionate about and start sharing it with people. For example, you can open a YouTube channel, which is something that I do at the moment. And after a while, you'll get paid on the ads that you run on your videos. Also, as you grow your audience, you'll get sponsorships and brand deals too. This being said, if you don't want to show your face and stay relatively private, you can start a podcast and provide value in an audio format. Apparently, you can expect to make $18 for a 30 second ad for 1000 listens. However, if you want to eventually turn this into a serious passive income source, you need to think about it as an entrepreneur, hence the term creatorpreneur. If you don't think about it as a business, it's just a hobby. So you need to find a balance. As with the previous one, this is super low cost, but it requires a lot of hard work and consistency to get monetized and turn it into a long-term income stream. Moving on, this next one is a byproduct of the previous two methods. Because once you have an audience, you can then get involved in affiliate marketing. This is when you promote someone else's goods and services and you get a commission for doing so. The way it works is you sign up to an affiliate program like Amazon Associates. And once you have your affiliate links, you can share them on your different platforms. And when people buy products through your link, you will get a percentage of the sales. The average amount that an affiliate marketer makes is $55,000 a year. However, as with the previous ideas, it requires a lot of time and effort to build a platform and an audience who will click on your affiliate links and buy the products that you're promoting. And finally, the last one on my list is an unconventional one, which I haven't seen many people talk about, and that is Spotify playlists. This is a great way to make leveraged income, especially if you don't have a lot of money to spend. You just need to spend time putting together a good playlist and gaining followers. And the way you make money from this is by charging up and coming artists a fee for getting featured on your playlist. However, this is against Spotify terms of service. So you need to find a way to charge these artists money outside of Spotify through a platform like Patreon, for example. So for instance, once you build a large base of playlist listeners, you charge a monthly fee on Patreon for people who want their music featured on the playlist. And the best thing is that you can create multiple playlists for different genres and charge different prices for each. But as you can guess, it takes a lot of time and effort to build that audience. 